Sometimes we think of the brain and the heart uh, as just unrelated, two separate things going on, but they're very closely connected and they really need each other. But it's more than that. Let's talk about the things that happen to both the heart and the brain. So if you get a blood vessel that closes off in the heart, that's a heart attack, we call a myocardial infarction. And we'll talk in just a second here about the process that causes that. If you have a stroke, that's a cerebral infarction. So you notice the connection, they're both infarctions, one myocardial heart, one cerebral. Now heart attacks tend to occur a little bit, maybe 10 years, they peak earlier than strokes. Heart attacks occur in younger people, and I think they peak somewhere in their 60s. They share the similar risk factors with stroke. So we have a saying, if it's good for the brain, it's good for the heart, or if it's good for the heart, it's good for the brain. But think about the things that are bad, and they're bad for both. High blood pressure, the number one cause of strokes. Smoking, bad for you. Diabetes, high cholesterol, and the bad type of cholesterol physical activity, and obesity. So all of those are significant risk factors for both stroke and for a heart attack. So what can you do? And it's never too early to start. I always say that you ought to have your children checked as they get, if you have a history of high blood pressure and a high cholesterol, then when they get to be teenagers and certainly in their 20s, it's never too soon to start and check. So first, know your blood pressure and control it. We have pretty tight criteria these days. When I first went into practice, it was okay to have a little bit of hypertension. Uh, for most people, unless we're talking about the elderly population, it's not okay to have a little bit of hypertension. You need to monitor your heartbeat to look out for atrial fibrillation. Is it an irregular heartbeat? And that's more common as we get older. And there's a high correlation between atrial fibrillation, and stroke. There's nothing good we can say about smoking. And we as physicians, we know how, that it's very hard to stop smoking. But if you smoke, we really can't encourage you hard enough to stop. And a big issue now is vaping. Everybody thought, oh, well, we'll vape. That's not going to be a problem. And what we're seeing is that there's a significant association of vaping and all the risk factors. If you have high cholesterol, Take medication if you can to, cl to control it. How much alcohol do you drink? Most people say, well, I don't drink that much. But you'd be surprised that the recommendation for women for wine is one four to six ounce pour, for men two. And there's even some new literature suggesting that mm -hmm, maybe alcohol isn't good, where we always thought alcohol was good. But most people's idea of moderation is a whole lot more than what it really is. Some type of regular exercise, um, 150 minutes a week that'll get your heart rate up uh, is the recommended dose of exercise. And a lot of people have their favorite diet and it gets down to eating sensibly. And I always tell people, start with portion control. You wanna check your carotid artery and other arteries for peripheral vascular disease. And one of the most important things, if you get chest pain, or you get symptoms of a stroke, numbness on one side of your body, difficulty speaking, don't wait for the basketball or the football game to end or decide you're gonna call your doctor later. You need to call 911 because time is of the essence. So remember this little quote, if it's good for the heart, it's good for the brain.